Hey everybody, welcome back. In this episode, I want to talk about something that kind of frustrates me very often as a software developer. And I notice it's something that happens quite often when I'm working with JavaScript and JavaScript libraries. And that is dependency breakage. Dependencies that you're using and including out there from the cloud. A lot of times the maintainers of those packages will make breaking changes that could break your software. So when the time comes that you want to update your dependencies, something is going to break. And dealing with these sort of things can make you feel like you're spinning tires a lot because you really want to be doing something more productive. Today, we're going to focus on ES build. There was version 0.17 that came out just a few days ago, and there was a change in that that broke the watcher feature that I was using when I'm doing development of my program. So I'm going to show you exactly what happened here and how I went about fixing it. And hopefully by the end of this video, you get a good overview of some research techniques you could do to help you deal with these sort of things if you have to deal with it yourself. Okay, but first I want to show you a problem that I ran into when trying to make this video for you guys. So I figured out how to fix that issue I had with the dependency in ES build. As you, as you can see here, I did a commit to my program to do that. And I want to go back to where I was just before making these updates. So what I did was I went back to that earlier commit and I created a branch for that. So now I'm going to try to reload the dependencies that I had originally that I was running this program on and watch what happens. So I do npm install and look we get this huge error here. Something broke and I didn't even do anything. I'm just going back to an older version of this program and trying to load up the dependencies that were there and were working before and for some reason this isn't working anymore. Okay, so reading through the stack trace here, the uh, critical error message is this undefined variable in the stack library. And looking that up, thanks to stack overflow, we see that uh, it looks like the node sass library is deprecated. So if we go to the node sass package page, we could see that uh, this is deprecated now and we should be using dart sass. So what in my program would be using the old node SAS? Well, if I look here at the ES build SAS plugin that I'm using, this says it uses the new Dart SAS, so I don't know what's going on. Do I have an older version of that? But let's take a look at the package JSON here and see what's using this as a dependency. And there we see node SAS this is as a dependency. And what's this? Oh, Rails Webpacker. This program shouldn't even be using Rails Webpacker because we're using Stimulus.js for this and we're using ES build. So I have no idea how Rails Webpacker is still hanging around here in my dependency. So we're going to delete that and UJS. Seems I have a few extra dependencies listed here in package JSON I don't need. Maybe that will fix up the problem. But it's really weird to me how I had that old dependency in my program and I couldn't even load up the old version of the code and you know it might come down to me using the latest version of node because i'm using 19.4 right now and i was using one of these other versions i don't even know which one it was so that's a good argument for having an nvr an nvmrc file around but i didn't put one in on this project but anyway so we got rid of webpacker and it seems like this is able to at least download the dependencies now and not throw a fit. So now on to the ES build problem. So originally I was using ES build version 0.14.23 and here's how I am using it. So I have my build configuration and uh, it uses run build as you can see right there. So when I run this it should do a build oh, great what's this well that's new i noticed that before gosh this video's not turning out too good with these dependencies anyway so it seems seems to be working now um it would run the build script here 
node build.js. Here is my build.js. And as you can see here, I have this watch going on here. And every time it does a rebuild, it will tell you if the build succeeded. And then it will go into watching mode. Yeah, it looks like these are just deprecation warnings. Well, anyway, so I have this watcher going here. Let's try to make a change to my style sheet. Okay, so here is my program. Let's go ahead and make a change to the style, and the watcher should catch that and propagate the change to the actual program. So why don't we do something like... So we'll change the background of this thing to blue. And okay, so build succeeded. It triggered this code here from the watch on rebuild event. Watch build succeeded. So if we go refresh this page, the background is blue. So our watcher is working, and this is very useful in development. I just hit this button, and it's constantly running this build script here. And uh, it's, it's watching for changes on anything front-end that I'm doing related to the JavaScript or my style sheets, and it will automatically update that for me in my development environment. Okay, so now let's go ahead and upgrade our ES build, and you'll see how this breaks. So I'm going to stop this. I'm going to go back to our terminal, and we're going to do a npm install. Let's build that latest. All right, so it's going to download the latest ES build version and update our package for that. So we go back to our program. As you can see, the package.json file has been updated. We have ES build 0.17.3, latest version. So let's try to rerun our build script again. And oops, invalid option, watch. So what changed? Well, the first thing that I did in trying to diagnose this was I went to the ES build change log. This is on the GitHub page. So I went to the ES build project page and I went to the change log file. And then we go down here. I look for stuff where it talked about the watch thing. And sure enough, they removed some of these uh, functions related to watch. Now the problem is, if they got rid of this, how do I replicate the functionality that I had before? Well, okay, so I go to the ES build latest documentation, and they made this really complex. So here you have to build a context, and then you, you have to hit the uh, context.watch, which returns a promise. And then that somehow does the watching. Okay. Now the problem with this simplistic example that they give you here is that I can't have any of the fancy stuff in the output that I used to have before. It'll just say watching, and you just have to take its word for it that it's doing its job, which could be really frustrating because if for some reason the rebuild is not working, you won't really know that, you know, if you're doing some weird thing and let's say it's a matter of timing or something like that or some cache in your browser when you're checking and you want to make sure that the ES build is working and when it last rebuilt, uh, this here won't tell you. We look at our build script here, you know, I, I got telling you whether it failed the build or whether the build succeeded and it gives you the exact time that it got rebuilt and that's useful for knowing that it if I made a change the change immediately took place and I know that's done implementing the latest change in the code that I had so this is what my old code was and I have to update that all right so I did some digging around here I went on to the issues here in the github and I did some searching around and uh, I searched for on rebuild to see if there's a replacement for the on rebuild, which they didn't give you a really good replacement for. Uh, but in this thread right here, I found out that they give you some on start and on end events, which you could use. 
And uh, I looked up some of the examples on uh, how to use the on start and on end. I took a look at this result thing that it passes. And let me show you the new code that I wrote. Okay, so here is my new code. I'm using the uh, context build that they give in their simplistic example here. So I'm using ES build context. And then if I have the watch option now passed in the arguments, so now I'm, I'm doing the watch by arguments, I'm not doing it by default. Uh, if I have watch enabled, it'll do context.watch and do watching. I'm having it give me the useful rebuild output in these options right here. So you actually have to make a custom plugin, call it watch plugin, do a setup for that. And then in the setup, it passes the build information. And then from there, you've got these on start and on end events, and they have a result object that's passed in and then the result will tell you if there's any errors involved here. I read somewhere in the comments that the reason that they're doing uh, on start and on end now is because when it was just rebuild before it was kind of generic and it didn't fire up like the first time that ES build would run. It would only fire on rebuilds and that was problematic for the setups that some people were using so they deprecated that option in favor of this so now you know when the build is starting and when it's ending whereas rebuild just told you when it ended after the first time that built when it's actually doing the rebuild we'll give this a try here give it a little spin up and as you can see oh, okay so i have a, a, the same little warning going on here all right so it said that the uh, build started let's see that have a build end okay build finished successfully oh that's right I gotta switch to the watch command so this watch I have a slightly different configuration here I'm passing um, it's calling the watch script and it's in this one's pass, passing the watch option so it's building starting uh, the and then it tells you that the build finished successfully so in this branch right now I don't have that funky background the blue background that we added so if we go back here, we should have it just plain. So let's go ahead and make a change to my CSS. Let's do a different color here. Oh, and as you can see, there was some output down here in the window. And we should see that now in the program. Oh, okay. I didn't change the background. I changed the text color. But yeah, you see, uh, it's working. And it tells it's working down here and gives me this useful status information. All right. So finally, I just want to show you a comparison of the two scripts side by side. All right. So now I got them both. This is the old code right here in, in the green. And uh, this is the new code. And as you can see, the new code is more complex. <sighs> These programs, it, it takes so much work just to do something really simple like build a watcher now. But it is what it is. Uh, we went from this to having this complex setup watch plugin here that you have to build. And it gets inserted here as a an additional plugin and it does the same thing so as I'm closing here one thing that I do want to mention is that you could get the code for this whole program so that if you're learning Ruby on Rails and you want to see how this all fits together you can watch my previous videos and I also have this code in a private github repository that I'll give you access to if you sign up for my patreon page if you like this video, please give me a like by hitting that thumbs up button. Subscribe to my channel for more content like this if you liked it. And as always, I'll see you next time.